Hello, IST 7th graders. Over the past 10 lessons, you've been working hard to learn about the Renaissance and Reformation. Over the next couple of days, we will be writing a document-based question in order to answer a bigger question about the Renaissance. You have written some DBQs in class, and it will be very similar. What I'm going to do today is go over the main ideas of the DBQ and get you started on some documents. This is something you will do over the next couple of days, so don't feel overwhelmed by the vast amount of information. Let's read together. The Renaissance and Reformation DBQ. Historical context. The Renaissance was a movement that began in the 1400s and lasted through the 1700s. The term Renaissance comes from the French word for rebirth. The movement began in Italy and spread to the rest of Europe. During this time, many fields flourished, such as literature, art, science, and religion. What I'd like you to do on a separate piece of paper is make a three-column chart. I'm sorry, a four-column chart. And on that four columns, I would like you to title them literature, which is books and plays. Um, then I'd like you to make the second column art the third column, science, and the fourth column, religion. What I'd like you to do is in a second, I'm gonna have you pause this video and I would like you to just jot down, what do you know about these four areas that we've learned over the past 10 days about the Renaissance and Reformation? So example, um, something that comes to mind um, is with um, science is the idea that the earth revolves around the sun instead of the sun revolving around the earth. So go ahead and pause this video and take a couple minutes to just fill in those columns. What have you learned so far about these ideas with the Renaissance and Reformation? When you're done jotting down those ideas, go ahead and um, play the video. Okay, so now that you have jotted down some of the ideas that you already know, so we've activated some prior learning, um, we're going to go over a kind of a reminder of what a DBQ is. So since we're writing a DBQ essay, remember we are looking at a document-based question. So we are wanting to use documents to back up our evidence about when we answer a question. This is important because sometimes we can feel a certain way, but if we try to talk to someone else and we say, you know, I feel this way or I think this thing, they're going to want to have proof. And so a DBQ allows us to provide some proof. So um, some steps in writing a DBQ essay, we want to carefully read the task, and that's what we're going to do together. Um, consider what we already know about the topic, which we just did by doing our brainstorming, and make sure you understand what the task is asking you to know. Read each document carefully, underlying key phrases and words. Answer the questions that follow each document. These questions are there to help you break down and analyze important information about your document. Create a thesis that answers the task questions, and write a well-organized essay about your thesis. Your essay should include support from the documents. So here's our task. This is what we are going to be asked to do um, over the next couple of days. Okay, so I'm gonna circle this. I would like you to write, sorry, that was a bad circle. I would like you to um, write down this task on a sheet of paper, and then we'll kind of break it apart a little bit, okay? So the task says, write a well-developed, evidence-supported five-paragraph essay discussing the topic, describe the rebirth that occurred during the Renaissance in art, science, and religion, and how this rebirth showed growth from medieval times. So take a second, pause this video if you need to, to write down that task, um, and then we will kind of break it apart together. Okay, some things that I notice when I read this task is I notice that this needs to be, sorry, I'm not very good at drawing on the computer. Um, this needs to be a five paragraph essay, okay? So this is gonna need to be an essay that has a lot of detail. So um, we're gonna do some planning out at the end together so you kind of know what you're gonna wanna look at, but just a heads up, it's gonna be five paragraphs, okay? Um, so then we have our topic, okay? So I see an important word right here, this rebirth, okay? If we remember from earlier lessons, the rebirth is talking about a movement back to human ideals, okay? And this focus on humans and humankind, okay? So I'm just kind of reminding myself of that idea. 
Um, another important the subject that we have here is the Renaissance. Okay, so we are talking specifically about the Renaissance time. But more specifically, we are talking about a growth from medieval times. So I am probably going to have to talk about medieval times a little bit because I want to talk about how it shows growth. So if someone asked you, you know, how have you changed from fourth grade to seventh grade, you would need to tell them a little bit about who you were in fourth grade, what your hobbies were, what you liked, and then you would compare that to how you are in seventh grade. We can't just Renaissance, we're also going to need to talk about medieval times as well. Um, and then finally, something that I notice um, is these three topics, okay, art, science, and religion. Now, earlier in your notes, um, I had you make those four columns. We're going to lump literature and art together. So books, writings, all of those things are going to kind of come together in that category of art. Now, I know this is going to have to be five paragraphs because I read that in my instructions. These three different ideas are probably going to be three of those paragraphs. So I'm going to have one paragraph about art, one paragraph about science, and one paragraph about religion. Okay, so on your notes um, that you have on your paper that you're writing down, I would probably mark this up too. I would make sure that you mark up so what is exactly being asked of you um, so that we kind of know as we move forward. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do the first document today. And then we're going to kind of stop because we, we talked about the task. We talked about an overview. We're just going to do one document today and then we'll move forward over the next couple of days. So um, step one says document analysis. This DPQ is slightly different from ones in the past. We have learned that the Renaissance was all about the idea of rebirth and development in all fields of life. In order to clearly show this, you will be given sets of documents. In each set, you will look at one document from medieval times and one document from the Renaissance. So in the talk, as we talked about, you know, if someone asked you, how have you changed since fourth grade, you would need to be able to compare. So we're doing really some comparison in this CDQ. So for that reason, um, on this document, we see this first one is from the medieval times, okay? And this second one is from the Renaissance, okay? So um, there are gonna be some guiding questions on here that are gonna kind of have some ideas for us to think about. What I'd like you to do right now is go ahead and pause this video um, if you don't have these printed in front of you. Um, and I'd like you to write down these questions because when we go to um, actually put together our essay, you're going to want to have these ideas written out. So I'm going to read the questions. Um, feel free to pause at your own pace and write these down. So number one, what are two ways document show one shows corruption or like corruption means kind of wrongdoing um, or people not following the rules um, of the medieval church. After you answer, underline a quote that best shows the wrongdoings of the medieval church. So if you don't have this paper in front of you, we need to write down a quote because um, you won't be able to underline. Number two, what problems does Martin Luther's 95 Theses point out? After you answer, underline a quote that best shows how the Protestant church may have been improved from the Catholic church. Again, won't be able to underline if you don't have this in front of you, so please write down a quote. And number three, how does the document, how does document two show a development or improvement, because we're talking about comparison in the church during the Renaissance? Answer using the quotes you underlined. So we're going to pull our two quotes together, and we're going to use those to answer this question. All right, so let's go ahead. I, I think it's always a good idea to read your questions first so you know what you're looking for. So because there's a lot of stuff um, in documents. And so we want to be able to, um, you know, really be able to know what we're looking for. Remember, this is during medieval times. Okay, so this is the past. This is what we're comparing the Renaissance to. Document one says, the church during medieval times, the increasing power of the church. The church also came to wield great political power. Latin, the language of the church, was the only common language in Europe. Church officials were often the only people who could read. The church had great wealth and was known to be filled with expensive art. The selling of indulgences. Starting in the 11th century, the medieval church began to use indulgences heavy, heavily. People were allowed to buy indulgences for the forgiveness of sins. Pope Urban even stated that those who went on the first crusade would have enough indulgences 
fully attend to their skin. Medieval people were very trusting of the church and also very superstitious. Thus, many people spent what little money they had ensuring their salvation. So I'm going to do some of these documents with you, especially early on. And then like once we kind of remember the hang of DBQs, I'll kind of let you do these on your own. Um, but let's look at question one. What are two ways document one shows the corruption of the medieval church? After you un answer, underline a quote that best shows the wrongdoing of the medieval church. Again, if you don't have this in front of you, um, you're going to want to write down the quotes. OK, so as I look, I'm going to look in this first paragraph. Okay. I'm looking for corruption. So it says the church also came to wield great political power. Latin, the language of the church, was the only common language in Europe. Church officials were often the only people who could read. The church had great wealth and was known to be filled with expensive art. So one thing I think about corruption is kind of that last line there. The church had great wealth and was known to be filled with expensive art. I think that kind of identifies a bit of corruption. You know, why does the church need to be wealthy? Like, I think churches need, you know, enough money to be able to run and to, like, keep the lights on and whatnot. But is there a reason that it needs to have all this expensive art and to be wealthy when people who go to the church don't have a lot of money sometimes? So that would kind of be an example of corruption. So the quote I would probably write down is, the church had great wealth and was known to be filled with expensive. All right, continuing on, because I'm looking for two ways. Um, the selling of indulgences. So if you remember back from when we talked about the Reformation, the selling indulgences is if you buy a certain thing, you can buy your way into heaven. So I think that's definitely an example of corruption. The fact that they're telling people you can buy your way into heaven um, is very corrupting. Because what if you're what if you're poor? You know, what if you don't have enough money? Um, so it's basically saying that rich people can do all these terrible things, but if they have enough money, they can still get into heaven. So I would definitely say that that is a piece of corruption. Um, and so one one thing that I you know would say is probably that second sentence: people were allowed to buy indulgences for the forgiveness of sins. I think that pretty well sums up a piece of corruption. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to looking at um, the second document. Okay, so this is the church during the Renaissance. And this is our focus. The medieval church was just what we're comparing it to. So um, reading the document, Martin Luther's 95 Theses were responsible for dividing the Catholic Church and sparking the Protestant Reformation. His teaching that the Bible is the only religious authority rather than the priests and pope that salvation is reached through faith and not deeds, like and indulgences, shaped the core of Protestantism. Below you will find excerpts from Martin Luther's 95 Theses. The Pope himself cannot remit or forgive guilt, but only declare and confirm that it has been remitted or forgiven by God. At most he can remit it in cases reserved to his discretion. Except for these cases, the guilt remains untouched. Number 43, Christians should be taught that the one who gives to the poor or lends to the needy does a better action than if he purchases indulgences. So we kind of see some um, Renaissance era shade being thrown here. He says, instead of buying all this expensive art we see in medieval times, we should really be giving to the poor. You know, why are we buying all these expensive things when we have the poor who kind of need help? Okay, so we kind of see that contrast there. So question two says, what problems does Martin Luther's 95 pieces point out? Um, and we're going to write down some quotes. So I think, you know, this is a great contrast here. This is a great comparison. So looking for quotes, um, I would definitely say, you know, um, the Pope right here is trying to play the role of God in the medieval church. And so um, I would say, you know, this line right here, that says salvation is reached through faith and not deeds. So kind of that saying, like, people should not have to buy indulgences in order to um, get into heaven. So what problems does Martin Luther's 95 Thesis point out? The indulgences. Second thing um, is that um, Christians should be t taught to give to the poor. Okay? So we should be encouraging people to give to the poor, not buying things for themselves. So I would say that's also a problem of 95 Thesis. Okay, and last question says, how does document two show a development or improvement in the church during the Renaissance? Answer using the questions you underline. 
go ahead and pause this video and take a second to kind of think about the quotes that we wrote down. How does document two show growth from document one? Okay, so um, some things that I kind of think about is, um, you know, we see Martin Luther really kind of questioning, you know, why are we buying all these things? You know, why do we need to buy our way into heaven when God is the one who is the ultimate authority, um, which is what people believed at the time and these are people's beliefs. Um, so why in the world are we having to do these things? So I think an improvement in the Renaissance is that we see a shift away from, um, you know, following maybe corrupt leaders and people beginning to question things for themselves. So I think that's definitely an improvement. All right. Well, thanks for following along for the first day. We will continue working on this DBQ in the next couple lessons. Thanks for watching.